since the beginning, rivers have beckoned to men. And especially so in the deep reaches of the Southland, where the fascination of the great flood valleys has become a heritage among a people who are naturally inclined to view the passing hours with a complacent smile, even in the face of supreme adversity. And as a river etches its rises and falls, its violent twists from former beds in lasting scars along its banks, so likewise are the lives of humankind recorded in imperishable chronicles above. For truly, as the ancients have said, it is written. Here in the hall of human records is the keeper of the books, eternally aware of the fate of all to whom the destinies of the humblest of the human race are as engrossing as those of conquerors. Thus it is entirely fitting that we pause to scan a single page in the life story of one of millions of peaceful families which dwell along the river, serene in their enjoyment of simple things daily renewed. And as we watch, the moving finger notes the coming of a new and tiny addition to its number. For here in the modest cabin of Zeke Ellis, there occurs a commonplace event. One of little moment to few, but the occupants therein, and to the immortal recorder above, the arrival of Zion Ellis. It is a matter of patient waiting to all except Zenobia, mother of Zeke's small brood, and to Granny Lee, the neighborhood midwife. For Granny Lee, an interpreter of age-old secrets, is hearkening for an omen that augurs well for the newcomer. Hi, Z. Another boy. I reckon you wanted the gal this time, ain't you, Z? To Grammy Lee? I am not so particular about gals, but boys seem to have a hard time in this country, especially colored boys. They sure does. But Zeke, that child was born for good luck. Your rooster crowed three times just before he was born. Shown up three times? He sure did. <laughs> I am relating all this because there was something uniquely appealing about Zeke Ellis and his family, something which set them apart. Sensing this, I took occasion from time to time to pry into the privacy of their lives. As you know, the path of any man is beset by trial, especially that of one who lives beside the father of waters. And so it was that eight years later, the river rose and thundered. Now, when flood threatened the countryside, the rallying point was Potter's Land a weather general store presided over by genial Jim Potter, who owed his trade and his esteem to a keen understanding of other people's troubles. Mr. Potter, what you gonna do with this bed that came down on the boat from Floodersville yesterday? Put to one side. You fell allow him to want something to eat before he gets to Carterville. Okay. And toward this refuge, as swiftly as their limited means permitted, hurried Zeke and his loved ones. Whoa, Jupiter, whoa. Is you tired, Zeke? No, not much, honey. Not much. Don't you want me to get out and help you some, Zeke? 
No, honey, you just stay up there and rest yourself. Stay right up there and rest yourself. We can make it, can't we, Jupiter? Yes, we can make it. Sure we can. Sure we can. Come on, Jupiter, let's go. Come on, let's go. We can make it. Spot, what I'm gonna do with these sausages? Oh, put them over there by the bread. I reckon you fellas gonna want to eat something by the time get this all loaded up. Yes, in fact, I feel like greasing my gums now. Boy, that's all you think about is eating. Oh, no, it ain't eating. I think about something else. Well, I know, sleeping. <laughs> I turned that rascal out the other day to do a little grazing there. I tell you, he must run away, because I ain't seen hide or have him since. You must have got bogged down in the swamps, Mr. Potter. Yeah, I lost a couple of them there last week myself, Zenobia. Look here, Zeke. You can't get up the hills without another mule. I know, Mr. Potter, but I just can't give up now. I've just got to do the best I can. And mules cost money, you know. Where's those kids of yours? Oh, they here. Uh, you Zebedee, Zachariah, and Zion, you come here, boys, come here, quick. Zebedee, you and Zach can go down to the barn and catch two of the best mules you can find. Bring them right back here. Yeah. Zeke, how you fix for grub? Oh, we got plenty, Mr. Party, we got plenty. Pa, you know, me and Ma made the last fish and made for supper last night. Wow. Zeke, tell me. What'd you have for breakfast this morning? Why, we had, uh, we, we had, uh... Pa, you know we ain't had nothing. But, Ma, don't you know me and ate the last two pieces of corn breakfast for breakfast? Zion, you climb up on that wagon and get the biggest tow sack you can find and throw it down here, will you? Yeah. And, Zeke, listen, you take that sack and go on in the store there and fill it up with grub there, see? Take all you want to. Go on, that's a, then Zenobia, you go on with him then, and you find some some sausage and some oil and some fresh bread right there by the door, and you help yourself to anything you find there. See, go on, do that now. Wait a minute, Zebedee. I ain't gonna walk way up there. I'm gonna ride. I wouldn't do that if I was you. That's a strange mule. I can ride, oh, I can ride anything with hair on his head. Give me a lift. All right. Time, I'm 
matter with you, boy? Where's Zachariah? The, the mule, the mule done thrown him, and he can't talk. Lord, I must come on, Zanova. Let's go see what's out of that. You reckon you'll ever come to Mr. Potter? Now, Zenobia, don't you go worrying about that boy. He'll be all right in a day or so. Of course, he got a pretty bad cut on the side of his head. Well, you have to get him to a doctor in the next day or so. Don't even have that bad scar on his face, one of Mr. Potter. He sure well, will. Mr. Potter, I'll get that boy to the doctor. I'll die trying. Yes, sir, I'll get him there, even if I have to take him down on my back. Oh, you won't have to do that, Zeke. Say, Josh, you and Pless go round up them two mules his and hitch them up the wagon. Yes, sir. Come on, Zeke, let's take him up to the store. He said nothing yet, Mama. No, son, he ain't said nothing yet. Is he never gonna say nothing, Mama? Yes, yeah, son, he'll be all right. Now don't bother Mama anymore. Mama, what do what do V E H I C L E S spell? That spells vehicle, son. What is vehicle, Mama? Vehicles is vehicles. This is one we're riding in. And that's the vehicle. Yeah, and I've been thinking all these years that that's the wagon. Me too. But wait a minute, Pa. This paper says no vehicles on this road, and it has a sheriff's name sign to it. I can't help it, son, whose name it's got signed. This is the shortest way, and we just got to take it. Come on.
are your names? My name is Sylvia Ellis. Here's Miss Brown. And where are your parents? You mean my mom and my papa? Yes, where are they? We ain't seen them since yesterday evening. Where were they then? We don't know. We was all crossing Whitehall Creek when the levee broke. And we ain't seen Ma, Pa, and Zachariah since And who is Zachariah? He's our brother. He got hurt his father's leg when the mule throwed him. And Pa tried to get him to the doctor when the levee broke and dumped us all into the water. We're fine. Yeah. You poor little fellas. Can I help you, Miss Brown? Yes, Captain Jason. These little youngsters have become lost from their parents. And I think we should do something for them right away, don't you? Why, of course. So you're two little orphans. No, so he's kind of by. <laughs> What's yours? I'm named John, John Ellis. Is that so? You're so quick on the trigger. I thought perhaps you might be one of the James boys. I don't mind him. He don't know any better. Oh, that's all right. But what's your name? I'm named Zebedee. Zebedee Ellis. Does you live around here? Not on your sweet life. I'm from up north. By the only owls you see on cigar boxes and in the zoo. Does the leopard break up my tooth? Listen, kid, where I come from, we're lucky to get enough water to drink. We use all our extra water for making lemonade and soda pop and taking baths. I wish I was up there, don't you, Zebedee? <laughs> You'll never get up there by wishing. Well, how can I get up there then? Brian, don't ask so many questions. Oh, that's okay, I'll tell him. You see, kid, it's this. If you haven't got enough money to pay your way on the train, you walk. Oh, it isn't far. It's about six or seven hundred miles. Most of the big guys from down here grab an armful of freight and hobo it. Is that how you got down here from up north? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think your brother's a great kid. There's no use me kidding you two any longer. Those people up at the office know that your mother and father won't be back. I come. Well? They're, they're dead. They don't know what happened to your other brother, but they're planning on sending you and the little fella here to an orphan home. But if you take my advice, you'll clear out before it's too late. Go anywhere, but don't let them send you to an asylum. I know what I'm talking about. I've been in there. See you later.
Then we ain't got no water. We have to wait till the train stops. Well, come on, I got to wait till the train stops. So we can get you some water. Well, come on, I can't have no water now. Because there ain't no water on the train, Zion. That's how come. But didn't you say last night, before we got on the train, the train was carrying on water? Sure I did, but that was for the engine. Does the engine have to drink water, too? But didn't Mama say he didn't want to know something to ask somebody? Didn't Mama say that? Yes, uh, she. she. Battling against great odds in a big city, but with the inherited will to win surging through their veins, Zebedee and Zion are slowly but surely gaining ground. With Zebedee, the eldest, assuming the role of breadwinner, Zion attending school to be a lawyer, and Zebedee cherishing the desire to be a policeman. In their modest apartment, they study and plan. Zion passing on to Zebedee what he has learned in school to better prepare Zebedee for a police officer. Zebedee tells Zion of the many experiences he has during the day, serving the public at his shine chair, so Zion may know of the natural trials of life when he becomes a lawyer. As the pages of time turn, Zebedee has reached his goal. 
He is now an officer of the law, willingly serving the people as he did at his shine chair, thinking only of rendering help to others, and still keeping his guiding finger on Zion through his remaining short period in law college. Hardly be as bad as all that, Mr. Ellis. Well, hello, beautiful. Where did you come from? Are they having a recess in heaven? The name is Jordan. Thelma Jordan to you, Mr. Ellis. And I didn't come from heaven. I've just come from the dining hall. And they weren't having recess. They had beans. Beans? Red beans. But we had red beans yesterday. And again today, my lord. Oh, well, I didn't miss anything. But you did miss something. And what did I miss? Today, there was meat in the bean. Meat? Yep, lean meat, and plenty of it. Oh, no, no. Zion. Oh, excuse me, gorgeous. I'm just trying to figure out how that meat got in those beans. But uh, were you about to say something? Yes, Zion. What did your brother say about us? Oh, uh, he said a lot, hon. He said I was too young to think about marriage. He said a fellow should be able to take care of his wife when he's getting married. And what does he know about it? He's never been married. And neither have you. And you mean you agree with what he says? In a way, yes. But we're already engaged, honey. We can get married right after graduation. And where will we live on, may I ask? Uh, I can get a job, can't I? Well, I can work. What kind of work? Oh, well, any kind. Common labor, if necessary. But that's hard work. And hard work is for mules and fools. There's nothing disgraceful about common labor. No, there isn't. But even a mule has sense enough to turn his back on it. Oh. You said that you wanted to be a lawyer. Your brother wants you to attend law school. And I want a husband whom I can feel proud of and respect and depend upon. That last thought sounds as if it came from your dad, did it? No, Zion. That last part is something that came from my mother. A long, long... I don't know. He hasn't answered my letter yet, but I'm wondering what he will say. And if I hear any more about this marrying business, I'll put you across my knees and... Uh... No, you better not that in. She's too big anyway for that. Put it this way, yeah. And if I ever hear any more, no. Just, just tell her I think she's too young to get married anyhow. And uh, don't forget to enclose the usual check. Would that be all, Mr. Jordan? Yes, I think that'll be all, Miss Rawlings. Uh, by the way, uh, tell Mr. Edwards, uh, let me have those uh, proof sheets right away. Yes, sir.
Come on, let me see what y'all want to do. Come on, let's get, let's get to work. You know, babe, I think we'll have a pretty good show after all. I hope so. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go now. Let's get it to work. Come on. Mr. Jones, you're wanted on the telephone. Thanks a lot, girly. Excuse me, babe. I'm wanted on the telephone. Just be sure it's the telephone, Derby. I might come in to see. Don't get frantic, sugar. Don't get frantic.
When did they get him? Who got him, Ellis? Okay, bail him out and send him right over. Boys, we got troubles. Ellis? Yeah. He got hit again last night, and they're holding him about bail. He put the screws on Hickey, but no dice. Ellis says he's going to hold Hickey until he finds out where the stuff is coming from. I've got something to say about that. Ellis and that blabbermouth Jordan with his newspaper trying to turn this town into a churchyard. But they think they're going to mess up my business, they've got another thought coming. Connors? Yes, boss. I want you to contact all the dealers on our list and tell them we'll let them have the stuff at half price, you understand? Okay, boss. And I want you two boys to fill every empty whiskey bottle you can lay your hands on. I'll get you some more stamps and labels later on. Boss, if Hick is not going to be here, we're going to have to have someone to help us. Yeah, that's right. Well, who do you know that you can trust? Uh, not, not anyone at the present. That boss is a D from Dumb. Guy stays down on Center Street. He does odd work. But he's kind of cracked. All right. Get him over here and put him to work. The dumber he is, the better he is for us. That's all, fellas. Okay, okay boss. boss. Hello, Pop. <laughs> Hello, darling. Gee, Pop. You look as though you've been worked all day and didn't get paid for it. <laughs> That's just about what it amounts to, my dear. I was only kidding, Pop. But what's the matter? Is there anything wrong? Read this. Any of them related to us? In a way, yes. They're colored people. Our They're all related to us, Sonny. They're all colored people. They're all related to us, our people. All one of them. Yes, I know. But what has this to do with you, your job for the police? You know, it is a job for police. But what concerns the police concerns every civic-minded person in this nation. And that, my friends, is exactly why you have been asked to come here. There is among you a minister of the gospel. The denomination is not important, for there is only one God, president of a woman's club. Women must be given consideration in these matters, because no race or nation can ever hope to be greater than its women. And then, a nurse, whose duty it is to administer to our physical ills, a teacher, upon whose shoulders rest the responsibility of educating our children. And a retired businessman who is familiar with all the ramifications of barter and trade. A young but efficient attorney at law to fight our legal battles. A society leader whose association with culture lends color to our efforts. A domestic worker whose association and contact with other peoples of other races is a valuable asset. A housewife and mother, the guardian angel of our homes, a laborer who represents the hewers of wood and the drawers of water that are so plentiful among us. And last but not least, a representative of our younger generation, upon whose heads will be heaped the fire of racial retribution, unless to the people we get together now and do something about this crucial situation. Think of it. 36 human beings, 25 of whom are colored, 
who've lost their lives in recent race riots. Right here in our city, a total of 17 persons, colored people, have died from the drinking of poison liquor that is being made and bootlegged right here among us. Day after day, we read of strikes, discrimination, and other racial conflicts. This news comes to us from all parts of the country. The situation has become grave, critical. And now, an insidious attempt is being made to lay the blame for the spreading of a wave of racial unrest at our feet. Our press has been accused of stirring up ill feelings among our own people for the sole purpose of selling papers. As leaders of our chosen fields and communities, it is up to us to get together now and do something about this thing, something that must be done now. In the immortal words of Frederick Douglass, let me remind you that action, not criticism, is the plain duty of the hour. Words are only useful as they stimulate to blows. The officer's speech is only to point out when, where, and how to strike to the best advantage. There is no time for delay. The tide is at its flood. From north to south, from east to west, the sky is ablaze with now or never. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I have read quite a lot lately having to do with miscarriage of justice where races are concerned. And I'm particularly interested, as I know you are, in having this country of mine go on record, yes, historical record forever, as being a country where all men might receive justice at the law and in the law. The greatest representation in the world today needed by men, and especially by men of the Negro race, is that somebody down at the district attorney's office of Negro blood and heritage have the privilege to have something not only to do with bringing men in from the street, but administering the justice after they have from the street. And so it is that I'm suggesting here today, not that we accuse this one or that one, this racial group or the other racial group, but that each of us take our responsibility, our individual and collective responsibilities, and act in accordance with the opportunities which are ours. And so I suggest that we think seriously about the fact that no law can actually be definitely, positively, that does not give every man an opportunity not only to stand before that law feeling that it will be just, but to have to do with the exercise of the powers in that law. Go ahead and fill all the bottles that we have on hand. Make no deliveries to anybody unless I give you the word, you understand? What about those six cases to the Blue Goose? I said no deliveries. But what's up, boss? Is anything wrong? You fellas ever read the newspapers? Any more questions? No, boss. OK, boss, but I can't see why this is going to hurt us any. That's just why you're working for me instead of me working for you. I can see farther than you can. But the young LSN is deputy city prosecutor, handling colored cases, and his brother Zebedee has held the vice court in this precinct. Why, Jordan is playing a three-way combination that even we can't beat. Jordan has been doing a lot of talking up until now, and now he's done something. 
means our cue for us to roll over and play dead until things cool off. Anybody got any objections? No, boss. Okay, now that's all. You fellas hang around and take it easy. I'll be in my apartment if anything happens. Right. But what about that dummy, boss? Oh, keep him on. He ain't no trouble. Honest, darling, I'd give anything to be able to go horseback riding with you. But this case that I'm working on needs every bit of attention that I can get. And uh, I've just got to make good for us. All right, you win. I'll forgive you just this once. If you'll promise two whole evenings to make up for it. Now that's a promise. And that's a deal. Bye. Bye. Yes, this is he. What? All right. Have you right over. I heard this young guy Ellis is a pretty smart duck. Yeah, that's what Hickey said. I hope I'll never have to face him. Me too. Ah, oh, you birds are just like the boss. You're too soft. What do you mean? I mean, if I was boss of this game, I'd shut Jordan up so quick it'd make his head swim. Just what would you use to uh, shut him up with? Well, he's got a daughter, hadn't he? That's right. And he loves that daughter, doesn't he? That's right again. And if he thought something would happen to that daughter if he didn't leave us alone, he'd stop, wouldn't he? Well, I don't know about that. You mean you'd kidnap Jordan's daughter or something like that? Exactly. Well, you can deal fair with me, brother, in that kidnapping game. I'll go for bootlegging, crooked dice, Chinese lottery, anything like that. Kidnapping, that's out. My man, the government would put you so far back in jail, it'll take three dollars and six bits to send you a penny postage. Boys, look like we've been out on a wild goose chase. Yeah. It's your play. Wait a minute, I hear the telephone. Oh, you always hearing things. There's not but two phones in this whole building. That's this one here and one in the other room. Well, just have a look-see. Well, we'll all look together then. Yes, but where is she and who are you?
Hello. Hello. That was a tip-off on Zelma Judd, but whoever it was hung up before I could find out where she is. Get out the switchboard and trace that call. Step on it. Well, you satisfied? Well, I guess you're right. Ain't nobody in here. And you want to look in the storeroom now? Well, there ain't no telephone in the storeroom. Yeah, but that dummy's in there. And say, I've got a hunch that dummy's not as dumb as he looks. We better look in there. Come on. Come on. Sam, you and Joe go downstairs. I'll take care of this up here. Fellas, look up here. Yeah, ain't nothing up here but that dummy. How about that room? Oh, I couldn't get in there, boss. The door's locked. Who's got the key? I got a key. All right, I'll open it up. Get a move on you. Hey, boss, know who that is? Huh? Do you know who that is? Oh, that's Zelma Jordan. That's old man Jordan's daughter. Fellas, that spells trouble. All right, dummy. All right, give out. What's that girl doing down there? You heard me? What's that girl doing down there? Do you think he's stolen, boss? Yeah. Say, listen, Connors, you get that girl. Sam, go downstairs and watch the window. Get a move on you. OK, sister. The boss wants you. Wait a minute. Say, boss, here comes the law. Yeah? Take cover, man. They sent the call to the Black Cat Club, and that's where they are now. Thank you, Miss Rollins. Thanks. There's one of them, Chief. Yeah, that's one. There's another one of them, Chief. Yeah, that's one of them. There's two more around there somewhere. It's all right, honey. Everything is all right now. Thank God you're safe. Hey, Sam, where is she? Where is Sam? She's here. She's all right. Come on, Sam, Give me a leg up. I ain't scared. I can't walk way back there. What, what did you say? Come on, give me a leg up. I can ride anything with hair on it. Say, who are you? My, my name is Zachariah. Zachariah Ellis. Honest, mister, we ain't told nothing. We ain't told nothing. Mr. Potter told me and Zebedee to, to go get these mules and... Now, 
We're on our way to... He's dead, Zion. Did you fellas ever find out uh, anything about him, where he came from, or who he is? No. All we know, they call him Derby Jones. Have a large, ugly skull with his left eye. All right, fellas, get these prisoners out to the car. Would you take a fellow to jail that once did you a favor? Say, I thought you couldn't tell. Well? That's what he thought, too. What's the meaning of this? She once did me a favor. You remember a long time ago when you and your little brother there was on a train going up north and a lad got off to get you some water? Yes, but what do you know about that? I was that fellow. I'm Wesley Hill. Oh, I see. But I'm not asking you to let me go just because you, you did that, but... Uh, my card, Lieutenant. F, B, I. Well, I, B. Hold it, Zebedee. The lady present. As the, in the story, the survivors, Zion, Zebedee, and Zachariah, are again brought to the Hall of Justice. Zachariah, who had followed the road of careless adventures, was prevented from slaying unknowingly his brother, Zebedee, through the hands of their boyhood friend, Wesley Hill, the dummy, now a federal officer. But it is written, the wages of sin. Is God made the world and all things therein. Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, made of one blood, all natures of men to dwell in all the face of the earth and hath determined the bounds of their habitation. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are his offspring. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. <laughs> 